I start changing and apply this principle. I am a triathlete. Even though I am a very, very novice, when yes. you practice at your humble beginning with the running, and even if I don't swim the 100 yards, and even if I don't go more than 10 miles in my bike, and I'm going at a five miles per hour, I am a triathlete. All right, looks like we are live. They've been waiting for us <laughs> for about four minutes. How are you all doing, busy high achievers all over the world? My name is Coach Shangri-La. This is Vinetta here, and we have a special guest from Texas. Her name is Gloria. Yes. Today, it's going to be a very, very valuable topic today. Mainly, why are we talking about this? Actually, let me just show you what we're going to be talking about so you know how much value you're going to get today. And I'm super excited because you're going to learn so much. All right. So let's go into it. This is the poster that we actually posted a couple of days ago. Building swim confidence in open water, even without access to open water and without seeing a coach in person. Crazy. So check this one out. <laughs> this is actually Gloria in Alcatraz. This what this happened in Alcatraz. I believe this is her second jump from a boat and she's <laughs> i'm gonna tell you more about her but she is such a proud strong mighty gloria and we want to talk more about because today all right let, let let me just have a quick summary about this uh topic here all right so so he was uh so gloria from texas what she did okay what she did was that she swam two miles open water swim in Alcatraz and it was her longest and it was the coldest open water swim that she has ever done in her life low 50s low 50s can you just imagine yourself cold. low 50s I mean <laughs> and then we ask you know maybe she's been swimming often well guess what <laughs> you know um literally just nine months ago she could even barely finish 100 yards in the pool okay also what she did is that she couldn't access open water you know in texas because she's just so busy and i believe and she'll tell you more like how long the drive is it's not so accessible to where to where she lives okay and plus also she uh she did not see me in person so, so how did she do it today we're gonna tackle this discussion okay how to prepare for a two mile cold open water swim about low 50s okay in, in the, the ocean, ocean okay with zero open water swim training for the past six months how did she do it we're actually putting like the 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 hardest you know like cold open water and then no open water swim how could you gain confidence i mean you know how it was you know like i've been talking to a lot of people in imnb and some of you guys say like, oh, it's too cold. How can I do this one? I have a race coming up. Like, for example, golf is soon in Texas, right? Like those races on the March, you know, where and it's so hard to get open water, right? So how can you do this? All right. Uh, what skills are essential for being comfortable swimming in open water? I think this one is a big one for a lot of people. They are not that comfortable in open water. So this, I think this is going to be a really good one for, yep. for us to dig into. Yep. Yep. So um, then how to deal with doubts and be okay with uncertainty. All right. So today we are super excited, but before we get into it, we want to welcome, let's welcome, let's welcome who's on the line today. Welcome. Hi, Hi Andrea. Hello. I'm hello. You could join in. I see Jen is joining us as well. Hello. Then there's Pauline and uh, there's Blaze too. Awesome. 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 Welcome, welcome. Welcome. And if you're, this is your first time to listen in to our live training. We do this one on a weekly basis. Welcome. If you're new to IMNB, say hello. I'm new. I want to say welcome to you guys. And if, how about like, let's, let's check it out. Who here, who here have been wanting to get into the open water? All right. Now, maybe you've been like, go, you know, going back and forth, having uh, lap sessions, you know, but then you see the ocean, you just want to get out there. 
Maybe you don't have a race just yet. Maybe you're in Hawaii, we're in the, it's warmer, right? But then you just want to get out there, but you don't have the confidence. Yeah, yeah. I feel here. You. Yeah. So how about, for example, okay, you, you probably have finished a lot of 70.3s or maybe a full Ironman, okay? But then it's that confidence that you're looking for confidence in open water, right? And you don't have doubts, okay? When you're all pumped up and excited and you're just ready to crush it. Are you that type of person? You just want to get some confidence. Yes. Okay. Yes, I know. I know uh, uh, there's been some questions about, I'm always at the uh, last end, I'm almost last person out of the water. How do I get to be kind of in the middle of the pack? Mm -hmm. I, I kind of want to be there, but how do I get there? So yeah. that's, that's part. I mean, there are some outfits. Well, actually, I'm talking to my, about myself. <laughs> you know, when I was new, I would be looking at the races and I would be like, okay, um, ocean, lake, pool. <laughs> okay, where, where are you going to be at? A river. You go look, looking for the race that maybe you're more comfortable of. And you're like, oh, that is ocean. I'm not going to go there. It's too hard. Well, because I wasn't confident back then. I didn't know the skills of how to be confident okay yeah but i it is, it yeah. is skills it is tools skills. but i came from not knowing how to swim and also scared of the open water swim but right now we've been able to help so many athletes around the world to actually have confidence in open water all right so are you guys ready for this so we got also nick hello nikki hello sheila welcome welcome so again Today, I'm going to show up. So if you're just listening right now, okay, we are going to be talking about building swim confidence in open water, even without access to open water and without seeing a swim coach in person. So without waiting further, let's welcome Gloria from Texas. <laughs> How are you doing, Gloria? I'm doing fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. I'm happy to be here and share with you all my journey through the triathlon um, and the, the love that I have for each activity in particular, but I am in love with the swimming more in that order of the triathlon, swimming, biking, and running. <laughs> nice. I love that you said that. Has it been like that when you started? Is it like swimming first before running did you say swimming biking running yes that's my love that's, that's how I, love. I am in love with it in okay. that but i actually start back on 2018 mm -hmm. running 400 meters in a track and field sure. Sure. um after decades of okay. not moving a leg so how about swimming so and when did you, yeah for swimming you know, when, uh, how about, uh, actually, before that question, let me ask you, is it okay? I hope it's okay that we ask your age. How old, young are you right now, Gloria? Officially right now, 57. Okay, going into 50. oh. okay. Oh. 58. We put in the poster 50, 58, 57 for now. 57. All right, 57. Um, when did you start learning how to swim? Back in 2018. I was doing my not even close to doggy doggy paddle because I okay. didn't even know how to do the doggy paddle, but I was pretending. Okay. Uh, I I I was playful and joyful just doing sure. my doggy paddle there. Yeah. Uh, that's how it started. But I was not even close to across the line uh, in 25 yards. Actually, it was nobody horizontal position, no stroke, no breathing, nothing. Okay. So you, you didn't know how to swim then. That was uh, 54, early 50s. How old were you when you started swimming or trying to learn how to swim freestyle? Yes, about 54. About 54. Okay. Who no. else here is trying to learn swimming later? <laughs> later. Now. Now is the Or time. just right now. You yeah. know, are, are you guys just starting to learn how to swim? I still remember when I'm like, Okay, I guess, you know, uh, we'll have to learn how to swim because I want to be a triathlete. <laughs> it's, a, it's a necessary evil, you know. I came from a running background. So who else here? I want to know. Hello, Nancy. How's it going? Hello, Yesenia. Welcome. All right. So who, who here? You know, you just started learning how to swim. Okay. So, so, so when you were, um, you 
mentioned to us last time, you were at around 54 years old. You were barely finishing a hundred yard lap. Is that what was happening? Struggling a lot, a lot. Okay. Was, my heart rate was not there. Um, my legs were sinking. So that was a struggle, completely, completely a struggle. But I was doing the lap, but not efficiently and not comfortably and not um, in a, Pro, uh, uh, producing something benefit at all, but I was moving and I was, you were moving. I was determined to change that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like we, we actually just read here, Sheila just started May, 2021. Congrats. Congrats, Sheila. Oh, look at that, Nikki. Yeah. I remember me February. Good job. Good job. So, so yeah. So um, when, when, I mean, cause you're in Texas, right? In like, the yeah, in the desert. Like, why did you reach out to us? Because we're in California. I mean, do, don't you have any like coaches there that you can that can help you in you know sports swimming specifically? Could be, but uh, it's interesting how things travel through your journey. Mm -hmm. um, I needed an structure, and I needed a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And I was looking before I find you, I was looking for different ways to manage that. And nothing was really working and making me uh, move forward. So I, I couldn't hold it anymore. And honestly, work was, uh, it's been always busy for everybody, right? But at that time, um, I was more determined to find a way. And uh, before you, I tried to reach out to other coaches and, um, they said that I needed to swim 500 yards in order for them to consider me to be coach. So wow. I was barely on the 100 and I was like, uh, I, how am I going to get to 500 if I don't? <laughs> you need someone. Right? That's, so, yeah. Wow. Into it, I found you. I found you. Yeah. And I was listening to your uh, podcast and uh, until one day I say, I'm going to, I have to write a letter and I present myself and I was very transparent and vulnerable saying, well, I'm far away from running and biking and swimming, but yes. I, I am looking forward to do this. And, and I was very fortunate that you listened to my story and that you took me into your tribe. Yes. And I was very, very pleased to continue this and, um, that the structure that you have for the individual to start working on the on the skills and the drills and the basic thing oh. the blood kicking right that yeah. i was horrible or my breathing that i was horrible but i i didn't give up on that and i took your feedback as an instrument for me to to become better little by little little by yeah. little because as of today i'm still working on those and I'm in love with the doggy paddle because I'm not that great at the doggy paddle, but I'm mastering the doggy paddle because it's so much value in the doggy paddle. So please practice the doggy paddle because you're going to be able to do the ball here. And that's amazing. And <laughs> that's the part that I really see the benefit, the value, and how much uh, I have improved. And knowing in the back of my mind when I'm not doing it right, that's another part that you know that you're not doing it right, so you have to correct yourself. And the feedback is amazing. Looking at everybody's videos also, it's like a great tool for everybody. So keep an eye on them because those who send the videos are very valuable. Wow. Yeah. So you, you mentioned a lot of things there, knowing how to do the things that you're doing and doing them the right way and then getting feedback, Yeah. basically. And one thing that I hear from others um, is not a critique. It's a mm -hmm. so. Uh, planting in planted in your heart as a way to make it better, especially going now to the topic of the open water. Um, the first time when I signed up with uh, Shangri La, uh, I was not planning to go visit with her because I'm here in the desert and things work out, and I was able to go visit with her on one of the open water um, clinics that she had. And like, uh, I've never been exposed to the open water. 
And when I was, got there, I was with my wetsuit and my, my, my gadgets and everything. And I'm looking at everybody with their wetsuits and my wetsuit was too tight and I couldn't even move. So I decided not to use it. And then I'm looking at the buoys um, and the shore, the distance from the shore to the buoys. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay one two three go 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 and i'm like oh, go okay go. <laughs> but you still time. went after it you still went after it what what made you go after it like even though i mean what did you well first of all when you were exposed to the open water what did you feel i think that was the first time and then you said that your your wetsuit wasn't fitting well so you're like okay screw this wetsuit i'm not gonna wear a wetsuit so Everyone she, on the first open water swim, she was not wearing a wetsuit. So now, but I want to know, like, what was going on in your mind when you had that practice? Were you scared? Were you confident already? Or were you just building? Uh, how about share to us? I was not as scared. Um, but I was very happy to be there to touch the water. Because uh, in my particular case, when I was a little girl, that was a dream. And I was yeah. a dream that it was in a sleep mode for 40 plus years. Can I you see. imagine 40 plus years? That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. So finally, I am there and I'm going to embrace that water. And that water is all mine, even though I don't know how to swim. But you put me to work on water polo. Mm -hmm. And you put me to do it fast. Uh, jumping without warming up so that was another impact to to your body temperature and I was okay with that and every time I jump out of that deck I was my heart was just blowing away but I was happy to, co to complete that uh, like 20 times something like that so that gives me so much confidence that I was not going to drown, that I was going to cross from S to H, and I was going to pull up and bring up myself and do it again and again and again. Yes. And that was the moment that I feel um, accomplished, that I took the first step, that no fear, mm -hmm. no fear, just yeah. enjoy it. And um, through the time that I was there, um, out of nowhere, I just... I'm sharing this because uh, it's something that it is really true. Uh, driving by the Marina Green, I saw this big, big, big truck that says um, Toyota Legacy Triathlon, USA Triathlon. I'm like, what's that? And it's actually a triathlon going on that weekend. And I'm like, <laughs> how come I didn't know? And things were aligning in, in, in reality. So I researched, I quickly flying and I say, Shangri-La, can I sign for this? Sure, go ahead. And I tried, <laughs> and they were closed because obviously the, the, the deadline was closed already. So I took myself into the actual place, and I yeah. and it was closed. And the girl was all overwhelmed with all this um, setting up. And then she said, she said, she asked somebody, can she sign? I said, yeah, try and sign it. Like nothing like, yeah, okay, it could be a no. And there's nothing there, right? But they, they opened the system. They yeah. registered me for the triathlon. And then somebody else was asking about the race for the 1,000, right? Yeah. So, Gloria, let me just uh, hold you a minute. So I want to make sure that our uh, our office here are, you know, catching your story. It sounds very, very exciting. But everyone, so what she was saying is that she was actually here in California for work. So it was for work. And then so she joined, you know, one of our group swim here. But then also while, while she was, you know, going around having fun in California, she saw like, is that a race? You know, there's this um, USAT and this was that one. So it, it happened like on the same week, you know, that there was a triathlon. And that was actually on the same week. She was like, can I do that? So there was a curiosity. Mm -hmm. There was like, can I do that? That I, I, I'm, I'm emphasizing that because that curiosity is the start of building confidence because we're talking about confidence in open water yeah. swim, right? That curiosity, can I do that? Okay. Well, she did ask the other coach last time, can I, can I learn how to swim? And the other coach said, no, you have to go for 500 first. When she asked me like, can I do that? Well, 
Gloria, are, are you ready to do whatever it takes? And we're talking about everyone. We're talking about the same week. She was just here. You know, she's never raced a triathlon. She's never raced a swim at all. And it was also her first time exposure to open water. And she was like, you know what? This wetsuit doesn't fit me right. I'm going to remove it. But then, of course, it's it's not just, you know, like just remove it. Let's go after it. Right. What she has done also is that she learned the skills she has just she's been mentioning you a lot of skills already. She said water polo, doggy paddle. All right. That jumping there. Those are the skills. And that is what one of the things that I wanted to bring up here. OK. And if you guys are, you know. We're, we're using glorious experience so for us to be able to help you out, build your confidence in open water swimming. And this is something that you can actually apply, not just open water swimming, but actually, you know, gaining confidence. All right. So what Gloria has done, she has built competence, C-O-M-P-E-T-E-N-C-E. -E -E. If I know how to spell it, I spell it correctly. Competence. All right. So what is competence? Competence is basically knowing how to complete a skill, knowing how to execute a skill. What, and how do, we, how do we build that competence? We want to know the what to do, which, 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 uh, which Gloria is already telling you already. So hopefully you're taking those. You want to know what to do. The next thing is that how to do it. Because there's a lot of YouTube videos there, but then... How to do it correctly is very important, right? And the next thing is the why to do it. And why do we want to do that, all right? Why do we want to build competence? Mainly because if we built the competence, and hopefully you guys can see this one, you built your confidence, increased competence, now you have more confidence to try often. And that's what Gloria's been doing. Guess what? When she told me, coach, can I race this weekend hmm all right well you have not really raced and guess what i asked her to do are you ready to do whatever it takes to get your goal before i said yes it's not about just like yeah i'm i'm badass you know, it's about doing you know and what i ask her okay if you're ready to do it i need you to go tomorrow morning go show up in bay shore in open water and i need you to jump 20 times from the bridge 20 times a person a person who's never been exposed to open well just one or two times exposed to open water swim she's ready to, to do it so she did it i said go jump from the bridge 20 times and i need you to swim as fast as possible about 25 meters okay and then go back do it again several times 20 times you know you know how karate said this one, wax on, wax off. Did I do it right? Yeah. Okay, coach, let me do it. <laughs> I'm going to jump. Okay. After that 20 times, I want you to remove your goggles. <laughs> when I said that to you, Gloria, what did you say? What Did you think about something or like, I'm going to do it? Did you? Well, I knew the, the meaning behind it because when you jump and you imagine that you lost your goggles, you have okay. to continue because the goggles mm -hmm. are gone. Yeah. Uh, so you have to deal with the salty water, the dark water. Right. Yeah. Do it, right? Yeah. So that was a pretty good exercise because for some people, like me, it could be a lot of fear. There could be a lot of uh -huh. fear. You're going to manage 750 yards or 1,000 yards. Yeah. You've never swum that long. <laughs> you are insane. <laughs> but you did it. So now what happened there, here you go. Confident to try often. I want her to build you know, this confidence that she will be able to try it often. Why? Because guess what? When she continues to be confident to try it often, now she's going to be like, I'm going to challenge myself more. I'm ready for more. Yes. I'm ready for more. I, I've get, I, I feel comfortable with Are this, you guys this getting level. This? What's the next level? Yeah. So you know what she did? She's one mighty Gloria. That's why we call her mighty Gloria. But you know what she did? She did not just sign up for that 1000 meters what she did she you know she's like okay she's more challenged after that guess what she did her first ever swim focused race on july 17 1000 meters she did it without wetsuit and then on the second day next day 
She she even did a sprint triathlon. This was her first sprint triathlon ever, and she did it without wetsuit. Okay, and she wasn't even planning to race that weekend. No, <laughs> no. You guys, are you guys inspired with this? You know, so so competence. Okay, let's go back to that one. Competence is very important. It's basically what what got her there. One of the things is that you know the belief in your ability to do a specific skill because she was doing it more often. She challenged herself. Then now increase of learning. Okay. Well, she didn't even plan to race this one because her real race, the real race is this. Have you guys heard of this one? She went all the way to the East coast. I'm sure you guys know this one. This one is a very popular escape. The Cape It's one of those races in an uh, East coast. You also jump, jump from the boat. <laughs> Okay. So, you know, like since then, you know, she'll be like, okay, how do you jump from the boat where in your, you're going to be feeling safe and just secure. She started learning. Okay. I hope you guys are learning from this. Hello. Hello, Kyle. So Kyle is here. here. Dan is here. Nancy. Okay. There you go. So, so yeah. Um, so competence. All right. Now the next thing that I want to ask you, all right. So, so, Gloria, I know you're, um, you're a mom, two kids, right? Two kids. Uh-huh. And you work full time. Yes. Okay. So how do you see yourself, you know, in triathlon, like in sport? What, who, who are you in the sport? When I become, when I make the transition to, let's put it this way, fossil, uh-huh. I put into the commitment to be active and to do what I love. And, and it just starts with the running right. Mm-hmm. But then a very, very, very dear friend of mine gave me a bike. Okay. She gave me this bike out of nowhere. And it's the most valuable gift okay. that I have. Okay. Yeah. Because she gave me the beginning of my triathlon journey. Yes. Maybe yes. Maria Andrusik, in case she's somewhere there. Yeah. The guilty one. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, I start changing and apply these principles. I am a triathlete. You Even though rich. I am a very, very novice, when you, you practice rich. at your humble beginning with the running, and even if I don't swim the 100 yards, and even if I don't go more than 10 miles in my bike, and I'm going at a five miles per hour, I am a triathlete. When you own that, you look for more. And you challenge yourself, not because you want to be number one in the podium. It's because I'm racing myself to learn and to become better. And ultimately, this is the vehicle that I'm utilizing at this time in my life to become the best version of myself. And Mm -hmm. it has worked. Because it, I wait for it a long time, but finally is the time in my life to take ownership and to ride it. And it's been magnificent. Um, I, and the most important part in my particular case is that I am breaking a lot of barriers and I am mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. It's not just about the technique, it's about my mind. And my main purpose is to transfer that to my family, mm. to my kids. And leader by leader, they enjoy my ride and come with me, either participating or as observers or getting involved, actually being practiced in the sport like my son and my mm-hmm. daughter plays a different role. But the thing is that you have to practice what you preach. So I have to be the example and I'm never going to be remembered for my job title or for the assets, whatever assets I might have. I'm going to be remembered for the legacy that has a human I'm going to leave behind. So the grandkids of my grandkids, one day are going to look in the family tree. Mm-hmm. And, oh, that's my great, 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 my grandma. And Mighty Gloria. So great cool. grandma, Mighty Gloria. Yeah, and she did something so cool that I can do too. So that's the that's the meaningful purpose of it for me. 
Um, mm -hmm. And I think that that's that's open your mind to explore new possibilities that you never consider because you were so busy in these crazy times and life that you put yourself yourself aside and there's no time uh, and i'm going to share this with you sure. really. right now life is like a marathon i'm 57 if the average life is 85 let's put it that way i have 26 years to go and that's exactly a marathon mm. so every ah, year is like a mile my math. <laughs> you're testing my math <laughs> So I'm working on every mile. Mm, Maybe in the I don't want to get to the finish line. <laughs> I think you're working on your 50 miler. <laughs> 50, <laughs> not up to not a marathon, but okay, I got it. <laughs> That's the main reason. I mean, I have to explode every potential because I learned that opportunities come like this in your life. They pass like this. And if you let them go, they are not coming back. Yeah. So you yeah. better take it. Yeah. Yeah. Love everything that you said. Um, I'm, what I heard from there is that you are a triathlete. You are an example to your family. You are a um, legacy builder. You're creating your legacy and you're doing that by acting on it. By, by being an example. By being an example. And you're doing that in action. Mm -hmm. Okay, You're being aligned to who you want to be. You're not waiting. Honestly, what I heard from there is that you're not waiting for someone to say, hey, you got the legacy here. Here you go. Or you got the finish line here. You got the medal here. But you are actually doing the action. Right. Okay. Uh, my son says that I do cool things. My daughter says, you're crazy, mom. <laughs> but both have their different perspective, right? At the yeah. end of the day, that is the value that I am leaving for them. Yeah. Awesome. So, so everyone, uh, I hope you got a lot from that and, and be inspired. One of the things that, you know, it's like, she also touched base of the why, you know, why she's doing it. And part of it is also knowing who she is. You know, she's not just a mom. She's not just someone who works full time, like really work hard, hard worker. Actually, she's not just that she is a triathlete. Okay. Even though even though whatever pace, even though when she was, she could barely finish 100 yards, she already said, I am a triathlete. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she was doing all the action. And guess what? That's where and we're coming in to the second one. We talk about competence. The next one is congruence. That's what Gloria has been doing. You know, she's just doing it. Congruence. C-O-N-G-R-U-E-N-C-E. -E. All right. What is congruence? Congruence is simply being aligned to who you believe, who you are, who you want to be. You know, she said she's been dreaming this one for a long time. She was sleeping for the past 40 years. And then finally, you know what? I'm going to be that person who I really want to be. That's enough. I got a marathon here and I'm going to take opportunity every single year. OK, because that opportunity will just pass, but she's going to grab it. Even though there might be fear, there might be doubts, there might be like, oh, I still need to get this. I still need to learn this. I don't have time. Like there's so many things that's going to come up, right? But she wants to be the example to her family because she's not just going to be talking like this. And guess what? Yes, even her son, you know, her son start running <laughs> and actually you know, start running races also because of her, because she got her son got inspired. OK, so what is that for you? Take a second to really think about what is it that you who, who you are, who as? are you? You know, so what so, would be congruent to who you see yourself being? So who are you, everyone? Uh, if, you, if you're listening to this, whether live or replay, who are you? You know, like you got to be that person already. And act, act, do the action. As the dream person, not the person you are now, not the, the one that has the restrictions, has the challenges, has whatever it is that's happening now. But who is it that you are, you see yourself being? Okay. All right. Well, I, I know we're building confidence here, but there's a lot of other questions that we want to touch base also. All right. 
So I want, we want to ask, you know, how did you prepare, you know, for your two mile? Okay, so let me uh, just pull this one up. So what she did here, she did the escape the Cape, and that was actually last year. That was about six months ago prior, you know, before the winter. So she did this one. She did really, really well, considering that was her first time, okay, considering that she used to not even able to finish 100, uh, 100 yards, you know, nonstop. And it was only last month, the month, last month, yeah, April, uh, around a couple of weeks ago, mid-April, where and she finished. There you go. Let me uh, pull this one up. He, she finished two miles. She, she wasn't swimming this much. She finished two miles. You know, she jumped again, and and she came from Texas. It's not like it's not cold in Texas <laughs> right now, and, you know. And she's not even have the open water. You know, she did not go to open water swim training. All right. So, so Neil, uh, we want to ask you, like, how, what did you do? Like, uh, you know, to prepare, <laughs> to prepare for this, because we want to know, you know, how do, how did you prepare for it and uh, share to us? First of all, I have a great coach who <laughs> understand me uh, that I'm not always able to complete my workout, but I make it up when I have the available time and, um, First is the distance. You build up the distance from those times the jar that I was barely trying to finish. I came into the almost 3000 on the pool and comfortable, especially mm -hmm. comfortable, building up my muscle, building up my technique. Technique is everything to facilitate and to make it more comfortable to you. And that's endless to learn because uh, is that there's a difference between the pool, the, the type of pools that you go, depending on the deepness, the density of the water, plus the open water, which is different from a lake or the actual Pacific or Atlantic. Or yeah. sloppy waters like uh, San Francisco, which is, I had the pleasure to meet with them because now I understand what choppy water means. And those, <laughs> and Hello, you know, that's the race, choppy. <laughs> uh, Hello. Before the opportunity to explore the wave with, with Changri La and Dinera, and that was a great experience how to enter. And that's an, a totally different story, but the thing is that um, besides those, your mind, you, 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 you visualize yourself, I'm going into this goal, I'm going into this ocean, I look at the videos and I see how those waves are moving and all the videos about Alcatraz thinking the current, they say the current, you have to aim for this point, focal point, the current, the current, yeah, that sounds great. But when you're there, it's like, a, oh, my God, is that, that's the current. What am I going to do here? So you don't have time. Seconds are going fast, 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 and everybody's moving. So when I went there, uh, after my practice, the open water, jumping here and there uh, in the pool, and practicing my technique, um, it's endless because it's never going to be honestly perfect based mm -hmm. on external factors that you cannot control. Mm -hmm. But the intention, and that's something that I learned from Changri La, and, it, and I hope this, this helps a lot of people, be intentional and translate that into action. When you do the extend, bend, mm -hmm. and pull, being intentional is, and go like a log in the water. So I keep that, those voices in my mind and so I can facilitate and feel more comfortable with those waters that are coming against me. But the thing is that I have a vision board that I use for everything and it's here in the back of me. And every time I have a different event, I just see myself, first of all, I don't know how, but I see myself at the finish line. How, what's happening in between, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just but I just see the finish line. I don't awesome. care what happens. If Love I it. Have myself, the idea is not to be in survival mode, but uh -huh. whatever happens for whatever condition, I see the finish line. And and the story in the middle, it's it's another thing. <laughs> but <laughs> that's the main goal, right? You have to aim for the finish line, and that's what I do. So I always keep that in my mind. And when I got to San Francisco, I tell Shangri-La, I'm going to go to the classic because I need to touch the water. 
that's the thing. I need to touch the water. I need to feel that water. I need to swallow that water. <laughs> and then I can understand how am I going to see myself there. And that's a must. I cannot just go one day before because this is a very respectful water. It's very controversial. And there are charts there that apparently they don't look for humans. But anyways, I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. I remember clearly when I met Shangri-La in the shores of Long Beach and the, the instruction she gave us uh, from buoy to buoy, you swim, go, swim. Uh, okay, so I get to the aquatic park in San Francisco and I see these big buoys far away. Oh. And I'm like, okay, Shangri-La, from buoy to buoy. <laughs> and then it's like, uh, I have now this time I do have my uh, wetsuit and I start walking into the water and feeling the temperature. Um, it was not that cold with the wetsuit. It was not that cold. It was not that cold. And I'm getting and getting when I get to this part. Oh, wet. <laughs> that is cold. <laughs> then I got a free lifting, face lifting, because it was so yeah. cold that I was frozen. Yeah. But uh, I just saw the buoy. So I had to go that way and then that way. And that's how I acclimate myself, not only in your body temperature, or in your body emotion, but in my mind. Mm. And I keep the back in the back of my mind, Shangri-La, keep swimming, keep swimming. And I told Shangri-La that um, my mantra, I will adopt the mantra that one of the members in the tribe shared. And um, he said the three C's. Mm. And that is cool, yes. calm, and collected. Yes. And those are perfect for me. Those are cool, perfect. Cool, calm, collected. Yes. You guys got that, everyone? Three C's. That's actually uh, Eric from another interview uh, or interview training. Uh, Eric, hashtag Eric, if you guys want to hear about uh, the interview with him. But it's the three C's, another C's, three C's. So cool, calm, collected. So those are the ones that you applied at Alcatraz. Yeah. So cool means just relax, right? Yeah. And keep your breathing because it's hesitating when you're there. And this ocean from, from the moment that I was in the boat and near Alcatraz, you see the immensity of the open mm -hmm. ocean. That's the closest because in Escape the Cape, it was not that far compared to this one. This is 2000 yards. Uh, the other one was 750. So yeah. you are really, really, really in the ocean. Yeah. And you have, I have a lot of respect for that. And I ask permission to, to the water to welcome me because that's part of my belief. So I talked to the water the day before I even talked to the sea lions and told them, hey, you have to help me <laughs> in case you see me there. Oh, don't, wow. don't, 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 don't try to embrace me. Just leave me out of the way. And uh, it sounds funny, but I do it with a serious, serious meaning message for the mother nature and um and honestly uh i cannot express enough how um accomplished i feel that i can deal with that fear or with that concern or with that unknown or with that uncertainty when you are exploring something that the under you is darkness greenish and life under you uh, and then the waves you have to deal with the waves too, and, and that's another challenge. But again, cool, calm, and collected. Awesome. Yeah, you kept your head and you did amazing. She even said, did you guys hear all the doubts? All the doubts? There was a lot of that, but she kept her, her head. Yeah. She knew what to focus on. She already was prepared for it she had figured it out and she knew what she was going to be doing before she went in she did mention also like finish line finish line and actually uh you know she signed up for alcatraz because she has another race she finish line what's the goal you can you you know she actually brought her uh, daughter and her son to alcatraz she brought her family She's committed to being an example for them to witness her and then have fun also in California and in, in San Francisco. Okay. As you can see, so one of the things that she has portrayed there, okay, that actually built confidence is commitment. So that's 
That's the next one. Commitment. Three C's of confidence. Competence, congruence, commitment. Commitment to what you want to make happen. And you're going to do whatever it takes, you know. And, and she also mentioned uh, the three C's. Okay. Cool, calm, and collected. She, she, she mentioned a lot of different things that was unknown to her. And she dealt with it as it comes. Mm-hmm. She dealt with it as it comes. It was unknown because she came from Texas. She's never swam in ocean in San Francisco. In choppy waters. In choppy waters. Okay. You know, she talked about the sea lion, the water, the current. Right. And then the next thing is the distance. There were so many, like one after another. Right. But she was committed. And guess what happened again? So, so what happened is that we're going to go back here. All right. So I showed you this one earlier. What happened? She kept building it. She kept learning. She kept giving, becoming competent. As she go after her big dream, even though a lot of things are unknown, right? But she is, okay? She want to be congruent to who she wants to be. An example, some a legend, mighty Gloria. So every time she challenged herself, she learned more, okay? Become competent. Be confident to try often. So now guess what's happening to Gloria? We, within just, what, nine months or about 12 months now, you know, she has made so many amazing experiences because she has continued to build confidence. And she said herself, it's not perfect, but I'm doing it. Yeah. You guys getting a lot from this one? You know, it's not perfect, but I'm doing it. I'm, I am triathlete. Yes. But give us your takeaways here. You know, if you guys are listening, Danny said, yeah, you have a lot of experience already. I'm jealous, Danny said. You said, you said, see you in Alcatraz. Woohoo! All right. <laughs> Nancy said, tip for open water swim, whatever direction you turn your head, the body will follow. That's how to change direction. Thanks, Nancy. All right. Kyle said, very impressed and inspired. Wow. Just wow, Gloria. And Just I wow. I think I saw Andrea ask a question. Um, how often? During your swim stroke, did you practice sighting with all the athletes in the water surrounding you? Uh, in that time in, in San Francisco, actually, all those, um, I did like 3,000 uh, jars and everything was sighting because that was the instruction. Oh. Uh, you okay, have sight, to do sighting. Often. Yeah. Um, so that was that was a very, very important thing. And uh, for the upcoming real triathlon Alcatraz, um, the focal points um, are very crucial because if you don't sight and you mm-hmm. allow the currents to draw, drive you out in the Golden Gate, uh, I was told that I better have my passport because I'm going to be taken to Canada. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. That's crazy. <laughs> So I better sight a lot, and uh, and I'm I'm petite, and, and I I don't have the perfect horizontal position. So I I try my best to stay focused on those big buildings that I need to look for, and that was another very valuable experience in this uh, event that I took a moment to observe from there because how many times am I gonna be in the middle of that water uh, in my life? Yeah. And I stop and look at the Golden Gate here in yeah. front of me, beautiful, magnificent. Then the island, the rock, then uh, the, the, the shore far, far, far away. And then the boats that were behind the kayakers that were taking care of us. Mm-hmm. But it's the immensity of the water. And that is a dream come true to say, I am able to handle this giant and I'm inside the giant yeah yeah love that you like it's beautiful even though like oh my god it's cold there could be like (laughs) sea lion under the water but you're like looking around and just enjoying it you get to do it and you were you did it you've learned so much since you started 
with with us with Pasty Box Coaching. Um, why do you, I mean you've learned so much? You've got so much momentum. You've uh, experienced so much. Why do you keep uh, needing us? What is it that we help you with? Because we're a team. We're a team, and uh, I'm not. I'm far from being an expert. And even the champions mm-hmm. need a, a, a coach. Yeah. And coach is everything in an active, in an active life. Um, I could just follow the workout, uh, maybe, but that's not what it is. I, I'm a serious triathlete. I go. am a serious triathlete. And I want to do this until my last breath. And it might nice. sound like, a, oh, yeah, right. There is a non iron woman who is actually a nun and she's oh. in her 90s now and yeah. she's starting her 50s and she opened age group when she started because there were not groups of her age and she raised a lot like 400 uh, triathlons and Ironman and um, probably she stopped right now but she continued to do it until 75, 80 maybe, 84. I want to do that. Yeah. Because at that time, you have so much confidence and you know how your body responds that that is part of your essence. Okay. And that's what I want to complete with my entire life on this planet. I, I, I am committed to be the best that I can be and the vehicle is the sport and the rest comes together. And I'm not going to stop being the other part, but it brings discipline to my work, to my time management, to my sleep, to my eating habits, to my massage, to my therapy, because wow. I have a shoulder therapy. I have legs massage because I need to recover and I hear to my body and that is essential. But guess what? I am investing in the next 20, 30 years of my life in my health, mental, physical, spiritual, emotionally, instead of paying medical bills. Mm-hmm. Your inspiration. I'm sure a lot of athletes have said that to you or your family members, your friends and family. You said a lot of great things there. I'm like, I'm just like watching you right now. <laughs> that is like a lot of wisdom there. You guys got that? That was amazing. That was amazing. So everyone... You know, that's what we do here in Feisty Fox Coaching. Everyone who's uh, in Ironman and beyond, we help athletes just like Gloria, who has big dreams, who's tired of just like sleeping. She said sleeping for 40 years, who wants to take care of their health. Because right now we can see you, Gloria, you've changed your lifestyle into better, into more health, healthy lifestyle. And it's not just triathlon. You're using triathlon as a vehicle to be the best version of yourself, to be an example to your family and friends. You said you change your sleeping time, your sleeping, which I know you do because you have to, because you need to recover. Sleep is, you know, sleep is essential. You've changed. You've been better with your eating habits. Time management is important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your commitment with work. You've changed. You, you're gradually, you know, like actually not gradually. You're like, bam, transformed Gloria, you know, within a short amount of time. So everyone, if you've been inspired with Gloria and that's what you want to do as well, you know, and you need have some help, some guidance on getting you there. You know, it's more of like how she has built her confidence is knowing being competent in the sport. It's not, she's still continue. She's very humble. And she's saying, you know, I still have a lot of work, but Hey, I'm moving forward. You know, if you are the same person, like, you know, who wants to continue to grow and learn the proper skills to be competent in order for you to increase confidence. You keep challenging yourself because you know you're getting the guidance that you're going to get there. It's not just about training, as what Gloria said. It's also the mindset. You know, all these things, the people around her, she just mentioned about cool, calm, and collected from Mm -hmm. one of our athletes. She learned that from Eric, yeah. Okay. It's the people you surround yourself. Okay. So if you're like Gloria, who wants to achieve your dream, okay, your big dream, but just like, oh, how do I do this one? All right. You guys can uh, have 
put hashtag game plan and Vinere and I can talk to you. Like, how can we make that happen? Maybe it's just like, maybe you just need to talk, hey, you deserve this. It's about time for you to shine. You've been waiting for a long time. Maybe that's all, you, you know, it's more of a permission. Maybe it's just someone to believe in you that this is the right time, that you got to do it. Because the opportunity might just pass through, just like what Gloria said, right? So hashtag game plan and let Vinera and I talk to you. It was a, it'll be a 15 minute talk, you know, like, what do you want to achieve right now? Where are you at? Okay. You might be just, you know, like you're new to triathlon or maybe you're someone who's just like, you know what? I'm tired of, you know, being in plateau. I just need more skills. How do you, I, how do I get there? Okay. Put hashtag game plan down below and we'll help you out. We'll get you there. All right. So before we end this call, you guys, if you guys got a lot of value here, put hashtag value. All right. And say, let's thank Gloria for your time. She just did a transition, a fast transition from work to driving to here to share you of her experience, how she did her, you know, all this open water swim from someone who's actually not knowing how to swim properly, someone who's barely finishing 100 yards. Someone who has trouble with the breathing, like getting really tired, can't finish the lap. Okay. So if you just, uh, if you're just lugging in right now, we just talk about this one. Okay. If you're just catching up because you just got off from work, building swim confidence in open water, make sure you start from the start and, you know, like, just want to say thank you, Gloria. Thank you. Thank you. Really, really appreciate you. One thing I want to say, um, like a closing statement, uh, from a warm heart, I can tell you all, if you are there listening, um, the most important thing is that um, you never give up, that you talk to yourself. Um, I've been wearing this one since I got it in the mail. Mm -hmm. I got it. And then I don't take it really oh. usually. So it's been more than a year that I have it. Nobody knows what's the meaning, but you, you all know what's the meaning of it. Um, and raise the bar because you are capable and we don't know how capable we are until we start stepping one step at a time. And it's endless in our own um, ability, but more than anything else in our mind. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Remember there's people who have no legs, no arms and they do it. Yep. And there is, it's a huge commitment and a struggle and they do it. I have two arms, I have two legs and I have the determination, even if the race, the, the race is brutal, but uh, beyond that is my mind. My will dictates my mind and my mind instructs my body. And that's how we get to the finish line. Amazing. Love it. Love it. I'm just, so let's do it. I'm just, I'm just a sponge here. Like I'm just taking it all in, you know, I'm just taking it all in. Thank you so much. Mighty Gloria. I hope you all had a great time taking notes, share with your friends and family, what you've learned today, or just type it up. What's your takeaways? We'd love to know. Let's say thank you, Gloria. Hope to see you once again. Yay. soon someday one of these days this year hopefully all right well everyone we this is what we do here in our men and beyond we conduct this free live training if you guys have friends or family who wants to be part of it join you know learn a lot about this you know just invite them all right different topics every different week. topics today is building swim confidence in open water and we'll have more on the next coming weeks thanks everyone have a great weekend bye thank you gloria Thank you. Bye.